For me, designing is one of the most beautiful qualities to hold. Being able to create something coming straight from your imagination excites me every day. Seeing something around you, in nature or simply in the everyday life, and being able to get inspired by it is incredibly fun. And when the design not only looks like the inspiration, but gives similar feelings when worn, the whole process seems almost magical. Who hasn't looked up at the night sky and wondered what it would be like to wear a dress made of stars? When taking inspiration from something like the night, I like to try to imagine it as a person sometimes. For me the night sky is strong and elegant, shining with confidence through the light of the stars. A fitting dress for me would be showing off an elegant silhouette. Maybe some bishop sleeves for a strong statement and showing off some skin in the back, but not too much. The dress would be in a deep dark blue, embellished with pearls looking like stars falling down the dress. It's not always this easy to draw out an idea that's stuck in my head. But every time I finally figure it out, I'm so excited to bring it to life. The pattern for this dress is one of the most complex ones I've made. I wanted to have a clear difference between the top of the dress and the bottom. The bottom will later be full of pearls, so it could be constructed fairly simple, but I wanted to balance it with the top, so the top wouldn't look too blank. So I decided to add a lot of seams to the top, spreading out from one point at the front and one at the back. This meant that the dress is made from many small pieces, but I think it is worth the extra work. Creating the pattern for the lining, I traced all the top pieces to create the different lining pieces, but made sure to cut away a few millimeters at the neckline to make the lining pieces a tiny bit smaller. This way the neckline will be smoother and it is less likely that the lining will poke out when wearing the dress. I think it is amazing how much of a difference a millimeter can make for the fit of a dress. It is a good reminder to be as precise as possible from the start. When cutting and sewing the mock-up, I have a set seam allowance of 1 cm to make sure the test piece has the exact same measurements as the pattern and later the dress. This time I only sewed a part of the pattern as a mock-up because I only had to test how the different pieces would look together. The right fit of the dress was already determined before. After sewing everything together, I was very happy with the outcome and could directly start with the actual dress.
For the fabric, there is no better option to represent the depth of the night sky than a dark blue velvet, I think. The richness of the velvet looks like the infinity of the sky and with the blue that's almost black, it looks like midnight for me. Usually, velvet has to be cut in the same direction with every pattern piece because the fabric looks different from different directions. This time, however, I wanted to use this to make the individual parts of the top stand out more clearly from each other. So I arranged them all slightly different. To transfer the pattern from the paper onto the fabric, I use my chalk. I love how it feels on the fabric and how easy it is to work with it. I added a seam allowance of 1 cm to all pieces except the center back, since this will later get an invisible zipper. Cutting the skirt, I'm using a technique I learned at school. I started with drawing the pattern onto the fabric. My pattern pieces were a lot shorter than the skirt to save on paper, so I had to trace the top part and then add the right length with the help of my measuring tape. I wanted to have the exact lines where I had to sew on both sides, at least until the waist, so I basted the top parts before cutting. For this, I simply basted over the marked line. With every stitch, I made sure not to pull it tight, so that the basting thread created a loop. This way I could then separate the fabric layers and cut the threads in between. Now the lines are marked on both pieces and I could sew the skirt parts together more easy. After drawing all the pieces onto the fabric, marking the seam allowance and cutting the fabric, it was then time to sew all the parts together. One of the most important parts of sewing that literally holds everything together is the thread. We often think about which fabric fits our project or has the best quality, but are we doing the same when it comes to the threads? The one I'm using here is the one I normally use. I fell in love with it when I got first introduced to it at the start of my apprenticeship and I'm using it since. Sewing all parts together I made sure to sew as neatly as possible. This can be tricky with velvet, but with a few simple tricks you can achieve a good outcome. I sewed the top parts together as well as the skirt parts but leaving the center front and back open.
After sewing each top part to the matching bottom, I could then add the invisible zipper in the back. With the center front still open, this was a lot easier. After adding the zipper, I could then close the center front. Here it was very important to match all the seams. For the sleeves, I had to figure out a way to make the cuff tight fitting, but it should still be possible to put the hand through. So I chose an invisible zipper to open the sleeves in order to get it on. This would also fit the center back of the dress. I added the zipper the same way as on the dress, but keeping in mind that it had to be installed the other way around. After that, I gathered the top part of the sleeve and added it to the cuff. Then I could add the lining part of the cuff to the sleeve. The rest of the lining of the sleeves will be added to the bodice lining before sewing it to the dress. This meant that the sleeves were now ready to be sewn into the dress. I sewed a white gathering stitch into the cup of the sleeves. This would later give some volume to the top. I then pinned the whole sleeve into the bodice, making sure to divide the gathering on the top evenly. After that, I only have to sew at 1 cm seam allowance and carefully iron the seam allowance into the sleeve. The lining of the dress will be added in two different steps. At first the lining of the top part together with the lining of the sleeves gets attached to the neckline and sewn down by hand at the zipper. The lining of the skirt will be added after the parts are sewn to the skirt so that it won't be sewn to the skirt by accident. With the first part of the lining added, can already be secured under the arm as well as to the lining of the cuffs. After that, it's finally time to add the pearls. I used three different sizes of pearls to make it look like the stars are cascading down the dress. For this, I switched between having the dress on the mannequin and laying it flat on the table in order to have a better overview over the whole process. I try to match the density of the pearls on the sleeves with the density on the same height at the skirt to make it look as evenly as possible. I go back and forth between sizes and places where I add the pearls until I'm happy with the look. It should look like it fades out at the bottom, but still a bit random. When I'm satisfied with the look, there are only a few finishing touches left. First, I finished the hem of the dress by hand. I folded the hem two times and then sewed it on by hand, making sure the stitches aren't visible from the outside. The last step is then to sew in the lining skirt and match the hem with the one from the dress. One of my favorite things about sewing is that it consists of so many steps you have to think about before you even start. If 
Figuring out when to put in which lining part or deciding which pattern pieces have to be sewn together in which order, even before starting a dress, can make a big difference on the outcome. So, bringing a design into reality is not only about being creative, but also a lot about planning. And nothing feels better than a plan that is working out in the end.